It's Josh and I'm doing a DIY today. Any guesses what it could be? Welcome to my next DIY. So a while ago I went on eBay and saw that someone was listing a movie title thingy from the movie theater for Hocus Pocus. So I had to buy one. Um, I thought it was going to be really big, like, you know, in the hallway of the movie theater or whatever. But this is a, a mini one, I guess. I'll give you the measurements in a second. But, um, you know, it's still cool. So I don't know if it's authentic from when the movie came out in 1993, but, you know, we'll go with it. It wasn't very expensive, and it's... So what I want to do is make a light box for it so it is illuminated like it would be at the movie theater. They sell them on Etsy and other places, but they're pretty expensive. So you know me, I like a deal, so let's try to make one ourselves. So, you know, I like to figure things out myself. So I went to Home Depot. I got a few pieces of wood. This is going to be the outside edge. We're going to um, trim it with this. And I bought some acrylic. And I'm going to cut this for the front. And where is it? And I bought some cheap LED lights that we're going to put on the inside to light it up so it's not too hot and, you know, gives off heat and is a fire hazard. So let's start cutting some wood, I guess. I will measure everything. I will show you what I'm doing. I'm going to use saws, which is kind of scary. So let's get to work. So the first thing we're going to do is measure the mylar, which is what they call these things. So we've got a little bit over 11 and a half by two and a half. So again, not super huge, not the uh, big full size mylars that I was expecting, but still okay. So the next thing I'm going to measure is this trim because what I'm going to do is put this on the front of the light box. So what I want to do is see how wide this is and add that to the dimensions of the mylar. So we've got half an inch about. So with adding the trim, it adds a half an inch for each side. So we're going to increase the measurements by one inch for the dimensions and it should equal out. I'm not a woodworker, so we're gonna see how this works. Now the different thing that we're going to do with this wood piece for the actual box is I'm going to cut long ways first for the um, top and the bottom and then I'm going to place the short inside in between the top and bottom layers instead of mitering it and um, you know making the corners pretty because I'm not that skilled so let's see how this works once the box is assembled I will paint this but for now while we are creating it going to remain the plain wood. So what I want to look at is 11 and 5 eighths and then go to 12 and 5 eighths. All right kids let's do some math. So we've got 12 right here and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 eighths. So this should give us an extra half inch on each side. Let's take a look before we cut anything. See what this looks like. 
that is about right. What I'm actually going to do is go back to my 11 and a half to 12 and a half inch measurement because it seems like there's just going to be a little bit extra. We'll see though. So we're actually going to cut on this. Let's take a look and see how that fits. That looks much better. So we're just going to go with the 12 and a half long and we will um, measure the second piece after we cut this. So let's get the table saw out. Wait till you see this. Now that I put this little circular saw together, um, it's time to cut. Always wear protection. I've got these lovely goggles on that I can kind of see out of. And here is the lovely uh, small table saw that I put together, perfect for crafts. So let's see um, if it works and pray. Well, that uh, is not the best cut I've ever seen in my life. So I think we're going to try a different saw because uh, I was having trouble cutting this very last piece and that's kind of not cool. So let's try again. So the circular saw used to have a laser to show where you would be cutting, but apparently just is not an option anymore and it's not working. So. Cool. We will just go with it and uh, pray. Look how easy that was, and that cut is very smooth. Pretty good. Now let's measure. Little over 12 and a half, but that will work out to our advantage. Next, I'm going to measure our smaller pieces. So we need three and a half for each of those. I'll do one, three and a half, right here. And then we'll measure again after we cut, just in case it is over or under. Let's line it up. Hold over here. There we go. And let's give a measure. And okay, a little bit under three and a half. So what I'm noticing is the center of the circular saw is cutting a bit to the right because I'm lining my line up pretty centered. Let's see if we have enough wood to redo that. Seven. Yeah, I've got just about enough. So I'm going to make another uh, marking for three and a half. And I'm going to put it a little bit right of center. And 
there we go. I could see that the cut was basically right on that line, doing a little bit right of center. So let's make our second piece. And another clean cut. And they are just about identical, so looking good. Now what I'm gonna do is measure these two ends. Looks like they're pretty good. Let's measure this other one. So basically what I have here is, oh, let's see. So both of these ends have some kind of splintering. What I'll do is just sand it down. So the next thing we'll need to do is secure these together and make the base of the um, outside of the box. So for this I'm going to try a method that is not necessarily um, the way that other people would do it. I'm going to take some E6000 and try and just glue the box together. So what I'm going to do is put some of the glue on the inside edge. And E6000 should be used in a well-ventilated room um, and even with a mask. so. Be very careful when you are using it. It is pretty strong though. So I put that on the inside of the long piece of wood. Then I'm going to put some on the end of the short inside pieces of wood. So there will be some excess that runs out and you can just wipe it with a damp paper towel. And then I will do the same with the other side. Put some there. And then put some on the inside of the small piece. I'm actually going to let this sit a second while I close up my E6000 bottle. Looking for the grain that is not as nice to go on the inside of the box. Not that it matters, you probably won't ever see the top and bottom and outer edges of it. And now for the damp paper towel to wipe the outside. Okay, so for the side, I'm just going to take my damp paper towel and wipe the excess E6000 off and make sure that the edge is squared. Looks good over there. Let's try the other side. Okay, and the good thing about E6000 is you can work with it for a couple minutes, but it is pretty quick drying. It's okay that there is excess filling out in the inside because that will keep it more stability. So as you see, it's pretty square right there. Looking okay. I will actually wipe the excess off these other edges. As you see, it sets pretty fast, which is good. All right, now we wait for this to dry for maybe 15 minutes, and then I will put the other um, slat on top.
Okay, well I don't have any sandpaper down here right now, so I'm going to use a nail file with the um, coarse part of it. And it looks like it's going to work pretty good. So all I need is to smooth out this end so it's not jagged. And it's good. Pretty happy with that. Alright, so what I'm going to do next is glue this piece to the uh, shorter ends, same way. I'm going to take the E6000, put it on the inner edge, and then take it and put it on the short end. And again, I'm going to let it sit for a couple seconds so it can set a little bit. E6000 sets pretty quickly, but not immediate. So I'm going to take the already put together end and place it onto the long board and press. And since it is still setting, I can um, kind of manipulate it so it is squared. What I'm going to do is turn it so I can make sure that all the edges are squared together since it is a little bit um, loose still. Go ahead and press that down, push the edge, make sure it's all tight. See over here it moved a little so I'm going to just change that. And now what the best thing would be is to put some kind of a clamp on this. Um, I don't actually have any that will fit this so I'm just going to try and place everything together and let it sit upright. Yeah this is moving quite a bit so I need to be very careful but just let it sit and cure the way that it should be. Okay, so this is pretty square. It's not perfect, but I think it's gonna be just fine for what we need. So I'm going to set this aside and begin cutting the trim so we can actually paint it before it goes onto the box. So for this part, I actually am gonna do something that I know how to do and miter the corners of the outside trim. So what I have to do is change the angle of the circular saw in order to get that perfect cut. So let's do that. And luckily this saw clicks right into the angle. So if you think about it, what we're going to do is cut the corner at the 45 degree angle and then they all should be um, matching up. So we'll try that with two pieces and see if they match. Okay, so something that I was afraid of, I forgot. So you know how I added some room for the trim to go around the outside, um, I forgot to take into account that I was putting the short piece on the inside of the top and bottom, so we're going to need to take this apart and recut the inside pieces. So really the um, cut should be right around here. So that's where the very bottom should land. So let's recut and I will uh, put it back together the way I just showed you. So let's take a moment and now the box is the right dimension. Okay, now it is time to work on the trim. So now we're going to match the size of the top and bottom of the box. So the very top edge needs to be 12 and a half. So I'll measure that and cut. 
So the first thing I have to do is give the very end the miter cut. So I will start with that. Well, that was violent. So uh, it almost cut it all the way. So I'll just file that down and do a remeasure to make sure that we are marked at 12 and a half. So right around there, looks good. I know that this next cut will be better because, um, you know, there's wood on each side for it to cut through. Just because it's easier for me to visualize, I'm going to change the angle to 45 degrees on the other side. So this side goes in this way and this cut goes in this way. Okay, now that angle is fixed, we will line this up and do a little prayer that everything goes well and doesn't start flying everywhere. Kind of beautiful. So let's cut one more, see if the corners line up. They should. Okay, and the other cut. All right, so the moment of truth. We're looking for these angles to meet up and they are pretty good. Again, nothing with this is totally perfect, but we will be gluing this onto the front of the frame and the E6000 should be able to fill in the gaps. After I cut the other two short pieces, I will paint them and then we'll be moving on to our next step. Well, that's definitely not going to be perfect, but there is just too little of the molding to safely cut another small piece in here. So I'm just going to roll with it. You know, it's hoax pocus, it's Halloweenies. Now that the cutting is done, I'm going to paint the front molding. So with Hocus Pocus, I think I might use some colors that remind me of the movie so we've got some green purple red um, a dark red so i think i'm going to paint it starting green gradient into purple and then red and then um just kind of follow that along the sides so let's paint I'm going to put down a base color first and then use some of these metallic and color shifting colors after that.
Now that the trim is painted, I'm going to paint the inside of this box white and the outside of it black. Okay, now it is time to measure the acrylic. I'm going to make two layers, one for in front of the mylar, one for in the back. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to measure the exact measurements of this box so it lines up. And this corner is coming apart a little bit, but uh, I think it'll be okay. Look at that, just about 12 and one, two, three, four, I don't know, three eighths, 12 and three eighths. And then about three and three eighths. Okay, I'll put this aside. Now I'm going to use a plastic cutter I bought just for this. Never um, have used something like this, so let's give it a shot. As along the straight edge, draw a plastic cutter the full length of the plastic with a firm pressure. Repeat scoring until halfway through the material. Hang the scrap portion edge of a workbench. Apply gentle downward pressure to snap off. So that seems pretty um, easy to do. I know that you do want some kind of a really hard edge, so I have my metal ruler, and we're gonna try this out. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is measure. So 12 and 3 eighths. What I'm going to do is cut the entire piece to um, that length. And then, you know, cut my shorter pieces afterward. So I'll do over here, it'll be easier. So, let's go right, one, two, three. I'll just keep measuring down the sheet. Oh, say I want 11 and 3 eighths, so. Always measure twice, cut once, right? One, two, three. Let's go back up. It would be even better if I had a uh, L measuring tool, whatever that's called, but uh, ours is lost in the garage somewhere, so no chance of that today. And I know you can see all the wood 
sawdust on the table. This acrylic has coatings to peel off on both sides, so I don't have to worry about that right now. All right, let's see how this goes. Okay, I'll do another go. Let's try one more. Okay, that might be everything. Um, no, it's definitely not halfway through, so let's keep, keep cutting here. I want to line this back up exactly. Well, I'm scoring both sides now because uh, Roger said that was a good tip. I'm definitely not going to be a uh, acrylic cutter for my day job anytime soon. And it mostly broke off, so it's not bad. Let's see if it measures to what we want. Um, yeah, that'll do. All right, so now I'm going to measure the um, short pieces and start scoring that. And got the first piece. Looks pretty good. Let's hope the second one will work the same. Actually, I could just use this as my guide to cut, so might be a dumb idea to do that, but might as well try it. It feels like it could be a little bit easier. Just make sure they're lined up perfectly edge to edge. All right, let's get cutting. Okay, and the second piece was much easier. The trick is use this knife and let this edge really dig into the acrylic and it uh, cuts a lot better. So it took about four passes for each side to get this one and it was so much more enjoyable than the first. And now the next thing is to take off the plastic covering on each side of the acrylic. Hope it looks good. Doesn't matter if the edges are a little funky from scoring because that's going to be covered with the um, trim anyway. So there we go. Now this is non-glare acrylic, so once you put something up to it, you will be able to see it clearly. So that's pretty good. And now is the time I do need to worry about the um, dust on these. So I'm going to put some cardboard down, cover the sawdust, and then start putting the mylar in between the layers. Okay, now I have my cardboard and a foam brush. I'm just going to swipe it with that to make sure there's no dust or particles on the acrylic. Even dust off the cardboard just in case. Let's see a couple. And with this material, the foam brush kind of 
you can hear that squeak, it uh, will pick up anything that is left on there. One thing to note with this is there is a shiny side and the non-glare side. So this always you want to have showing out. So this will be the back. I'll put the mylar there and this will go on the inside. This will be the outside. So next I'm going to line up the mylar as centered as possible and then just use some scotch tape on either side to um, keep it in place. Okay, and the next thing I'm going to do is put the top layer on. Okay, so there it is sandwiched together and two pieces almost line up perfectly. What I'm going to do to um, attach these is just scotch tape these pieces on the edge since the border will be covered with the um, painted trim. Don't need to get really uh, technical with this part. There it is. Next, I will put in the LED lights in the inside of the box. Okay, so here is the LED strip. They make these for like the edge of TVs and monitors and they're about $5 at Walmart. Come with a remote to change colors. What I'm going to use on the inside to secure this is Gorilla mounting tape. From experience, I know the tape that is on the back of these is not very good and they fall very quickly. So I'll use this and I think I'm going to put it around the middle of the inside and let's see how that goes. Okay, now I'm going to peel the backing, or the fronting, whatever, off of the, the liner off of the tape so it is sticky. This is my least favorite part. Now that the tape is ready to go, I'm going to start putting the lights in and I'm going to decide which is going to be the front and which is going to be the back of the box. I will use this as a front since the edge has a little bit more black paint in case you happened to see that around the trim. So what that means is I'm going to make sure that the cord is sticking out of the back area. So what I'm going to do is try not to get everything stuck. And I'm going to unroll the lights in advance. And I'm going to peel the backing, even though it is not a great backing. Um, the 
adhesive on the back will stick better than the plastic covering it. So let's see how we can do this. Oh good, it's sticking to everything. See, this is this is the trouble with what I'm trying to do. Crap. This is what happens when you DIY. Just kind of make things up as you go, so it'll be fine. What I want to do is have the cord stick out a little bit, but not really uh, protrude or anything. I think that's good. Oh man, this is real sticky. So here's what I'm doing. I'm putting it right around the middle. Just want to press it really good onto the adhesive tape. Get it right in that corner. And make sure that it sticks the middle of the box. There we go. Again, pushing it right into that corner. Peel a little more adhesive off. with this LED strip lighting is, is you can cut it at these little copper markings. I'm going to plug this in first and see what the light box looks like before I actually do that. So let's put this last piece in. If I do want to do that, it ends at a pretty good spot right here, matching up with the uh, start. So let's plug it in and take a look. Okay, so here is the test. I'm going to plug in the USB and here we go. Look at that, we have power. Let's put it on white. I know that looks crazy on the uh, camera with the uh, LED blinking. So let's see what that looks like. Let's turn off one of the lights here. See, well, it's pretty cool. So what I think I'm going to do is since you can adjust the brightness and the dimness of these lights, I'm going to just put the rest of the roll in there um, instead of cutting it just because, you know, you can't do anything else with the rest of the lights anyway. If you want it really bright, it could be really bright. So let's uh, put the rest of the lights around the back edge. Cut it right here since I don't want the um, piece that connects to the electric to be uh, actually gonna cut it right there. Let's pray because if for some reason I cut the wrong place, the whole thing will be worthless. Cut right on the line. Make sure it is not plugged in when you do this, if you're ever cutting LED strip lighting. There we go. And see, so since I didn't plan ahead, this part was already coming out the back, so I just kind of overlapped it a little bit. What I'm gonna do now is just double check all of the 
strip lighting, make sure that it's sticking down, not bubbling. And here we are, we're good. Let me plug it in, give it one last check. I was worried for a second. I have had uh, lights in a very long time past that you cut and uh, something got messed up and they were like bent at one of the connection points and they didn't work. So these work, look good. So the next thing is going to be attaching the um, acrylic to the box and then attaching the trim to the outside of the acrylic. So for attaching the acrylic it's going to be our good friend E6000 again. So I'm going to put it around the edge of the box and then place this right on top. So I'm just going to place this right over the edge of the box, push it down, kind of feel the corners and just try and line it up as best as possible and push it down along the edges. It should be a pretty good fit. And as you see, it's not going anywhere, so. Pretty cool. Now, while this is on a flat surface, I'm going to just start gluing down the trim as well. Okay, so same thing with the E6000. I'm going to actually put it on the back of the trim first and then place it on the acrylic so I can move it around as I need to. But what I will do is I will put it on trim and let it sit for a second so it can set up. I find that E6000 definitely has better adhesion when you let it sit for a couple seconds. Now one thing I want to make sure to do is line up the uh, gradient of colors that I put down in the same order on both sides. I'm sure it'll be fine. Make sure you get a thin layer across the entire edge so there's no weird gaps or anything lifting. And don't let your E6000 sit too long because it does have a pretty quick drying time and it will uh, push away from the surface you are adhering to. So time is of the essence. You don't want to come back to this at a later time and try and put it down. Do it all at one time. That way we can move it around if something is not sticking or lining up exactly. Let's close it up. Okay, so the green goes on the left side. Placing that down. And then the green goes on the left side over here and I'm placing that down. This is that lovely piece that is not perfect. That's okay. I can always figure out what to do with that later. Might just leave it, who knows. Okay, so it's not perfect, but you know what, I expected that. So what I'm going to do is just kind of uh, move this around and see how it fits the very best on the edge. What's kind of not my favorite is it's going to be a little more light showing through than I wanted around the edge where there's not the mylar. It's okay. You know what? For never doing anything like this before, that's okay. 
Yeah, I'm pretty, pretty happy with that. Even not lit up, it looks cool. I'm gonna put the light on to see exactly what it looks like um, lit up. Okay, so you can see the light inside a little bit. That's all right. What I'm gonna do is accept it. I'm not mad. I think it looks all right. If I wanted to, I could put some, you know, uh, black paint around the edge. Maybe I'll do that. For now, I'm gonna let this dry and then we will come back and put on the backing of this. I do need to cut this to size. So that'll be our next step. Okay, so what I am going to do is take some black paint and paint over the edge around the mylar and we'll see how that looks. Might be better, it might be worse, but I'm gonna try it. So what I'm gonna do is let this dry and do another coat. Okay, so we're getting very close to the end. The painting of the black in the lighted area is, is okay. It's really um, not exactly what I wanted. There's a little bit of a black border through the lighting, but that's okay. It's cool, it works. It's basically the thing I wanted. So, now what I have to do is cut the backing, which is going to, see how just fabulous everything is right now. Um, what's gonna happen is, since this is not the, um, oops, just unplug that for now. This is not the full length of the bottom, I'm going to be able to just line this up on the top and the cord still comes out the back. And then I'm going to cut to the end of the box. And please ignore my bleeding knuckle. It's just because it is so dry in the winter. It's crazy. All right, so I'm going to measure this and then cut it. I'm not even going to use a tape measure. I'm just going to eyeball it based on the box. And it's okay if it actually is cut a little bit less because I don't want it hanging over the edge. It is gonna be perfect, I can tell. All right, so hopefully this saw um, does what I need. We'll figure it out. Okay, safety goggles are on. And let's cut this wood. Look how easy that was. It is a little jagged. I, again, will take my nail file and sand down the edge and it'll be all right look at that just a quick nail file and it's all good this is base wood and um, this was from michael's craft store cut so easily i wish all the other wood cut this good but time to glue this onto the back of the box and then it will be time to look at the finished product I guess I can take off my um, cutting goggles, so that's cool. So I'm just gonna put a 6,000 along the edge of the back of the box. Not too much, just enough to adhere it. And this is very light wood, nothing is too heavy, so I'm not worried about the weight of any of it. Actually don't need to glue that, so I won't. Duh. 
All right, so let's just take that and place it down. Make sure that edge can come through. And there we are. Just going to press that well. I'm going to take my paper towel and wipe the excess that's coming out. It's not perfect, but I want it to be, you know, kind of clean. All right, so I'm going to put some heavy things on this for about a half hour, and then it will be time to figure out how we're going to hang this. Okay, so the back is on, and now I'm going to figure out how I'm going to put this on the wall. Super easy because I hate trying to line up um, hooks to screws on the wall to make sure that it's straight. So I'm going to use some removable picture strips. I got these cheaper than the, uh, I think they're 3M, that have like the big multi-packs. I just wanted to try these. Holds up to five pounds. They are very cheap at Walmart, so why not? So for this, all you do is put one half on the frame or the item and then the other half on the wall and you can remove them whenever you want. I'm going to put this by my desk which is not really secure and it's a lot of drywall or like uh, paneling so there's really not anything behind it to hold on to. So I'm going to put one of each of these on either side and then we'll be ready to go. Each part of this has either like the um, fuzzy part or the rough part. I like to put the rough part on the item and then the fuzzy part on the wall. It doesn't really say which one's best, so I'm just going with it. And you just put it right on there and we press it for about 30 seconds. And then I'm going to put the other half on there so I can line it up on the wall later and then attach it. This will be fine for now. So let's see what this looks like. And after all this time, we have a finished product. Let's plug it in. And here is the finished product in the dark looks pretty good. Again, it's not perfect around the edge, but it is fine. Very happy with the painting of the frame. It's going to look great above my computer station. And I'm going to play with some of the colors. The purple looks cool. I like the green, the red. I think the best color for this is like this orange. Looks pretty much closest to the actual coloring and you can change the brightness. So that's really, really bright. Put it on white, um, but I'm gonna put it on the orange and make it dim. Looks pretty neat, kind of a nice night light or a uh, good light for Zoom meetings for work. Well, I hope you enjoyed watching me figure out how to make this from scratch with no plans. Um, the list of materials will be in the description down below. As you can see, it didn't really cost a whole lot of money to make this. I know there are Etsy sellers and eBay sellers that make these that you can just buy a lighted box for your movie mylars. But you know, I like to make things myself, so I did. So again, not perfect, but it's fine. It's Halloween, it's Hocus Pocus and it fits. So happy Halloween. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Stay fab.